Hello there Star Wars fans and welcome to another Rebelscum.com video. And today we are talking about the toys of Star Wars Crimson Empire. Now, pretty much all the toys we got from Star Wars Crimson Empire came from the first installment of Star Wars Crimson Empire. There are actually three parts that were all comic miniseries that were kind of spread throughout time. Uh, it started in the late 90s with the first part, Star Wars Crimson Empire. Then we had Star Wars Crimson Empire 2. And then we had Star Wars Crimson Empire 3, which came out almost 10 years after the first two parts did. Or maybe it was a little over 10 years. However the math works. It's around 10 years, give or take a few years. But we honestly, as far as toys come, only got toys of the main two guards mostly, which was Carnor Jax and Kirkanos, the main focus of at least the first part of Star Wars Crimson Empire. So Crimson Empire focuses mostly between Carnor Jax hunting down Kirkanos, who is one of the um, surviving royal guardsmen loyal to Palpatine, even after Palpatine has been long dead. This is um, after Palpatine died in... Return of the Jedi, and then shortly after um, the clones of Palpatine died during Dark Empire. So Crimson Empire, for those of you who are not quite sure where it takes place in the Legends timeline, takes place after Dark Empire. Uh, basically, Carnor Jax was one of the ruling members of the Galactic Empire at that point, and he was also a former guardsman himself who later developed, um, or rather later discovered his ability for force sensitivity and started using the dark side of the force under the tutelage of former Hand of the Empire, or Emperor, Lumia. Um, he decided, you know, he's going to be one of those who wants to rule the Empire himself. So during the events of Dark Empire, in fact, he even sabotaged all of the clone bodies of the Emperor himself on the planet Bis. Really cool stuff. But that's not what we're here about. We're not here to talk about the story of Dark Empire. That we can do later. This is strictly about the toys. And like I said, most of them are just really Carnor Jax and Kirk Hanos. Now, Kirk Hanos is really awesome, too. Like I said, he's the one who remained loyal to the Emperor even long after he was dead. Um, and Kirk Hanos is really awesome. Of course, he does get his revenge. He does kill Carnor Jax in the end, um, all while maybe begrudgingly working alongside some rebel characters and fighting off other Imperials loyal to Carnor Jax, and it's really cool. And then, of course, he does more stuff in the second uh, part of Crimson Empire and more stuff in the third part of Crimson Empire. But to go along with it, I even have some Royal Guard figures because, well, it's very likely at one point, even though they have these nice, fanciful uh, Royal Guard uniforms right here in front, um, it's very likely they also rule wore the regular ones. So here we have the first Royal Guard figure, well, first modern Royal Guard figure from Power of the Force 2. We have the second one ever released in, in modern Star Wars toys over here, which is the Attack of the Clones 2 Royal Guard, which was repacked once or twice. And then we had the third one over here, which is the Episode 3 of the Roy version of the Royal Guard. Then we have the VC Royal Guard, which was repacked as the Black Series 3 3 quarter scale, which was the first three three quarter scale Royal Guard to be released with the swappable training gear, which is really cool, and then later made its way into canon in Rebels, which was also very cool. Um, now, there is also a multi-figure pack with two other Royal Guards, including Kerr Canos and Carnor Jax in their training gear. However, they are multicolored. They're not wearing just the straight up red gear like these two guys have right here. Um, the other two are Alum Frost and Limit Tauk. I'm, I'm not quite sure how to say that specifically, T-A-U-K. If, uh, if somebody knows in the comments, please let us know. And, and please feel free to interact with us again while we're doing these videos, guys. Please comment and let us know what you think and let us know what you think we might leave out or other characters you might want to hear about. Um, but specifically talking about Crimson Empires, specifically Crimson Empire Part 1, which is, seems to be the primary focus for Hasbro with figures, um, I, I would like to see figures of other supporting characters from this series, like one of the main characters, one of the rebel characters, Mirith Sin. Um, Mirith Sin was a big supporting character for the rebels 
trying to work with Kirk Hanos to stop Carnor Jax and then later turned enemy of Kirk Hanos when he killed Carnor Jax. Uh, Sadit was another was another rebel character. Colonel Shev was one of the Imperial officers working directly under uh, Carnor Jax. Um, I think with a lot of these characters, especially for the for the focus of right here, for example, speaking of the comic pack, I think we could have gotten some other comic packs from this. Um, Mira Sen and Sadit, for example, or if you wanted to do a versus kind of thing, maybe Mira Sen facing off against uh, Colonel Shev or um, Tem Murkon, who was working both sides in that in that story. Um, another another Royal Guard could be squeaked in there. The one that. Uh, Vader spars with in front of the other guardsmen, including Kirk Hanos and Carnor Jax, when they were first recruited to become guardsmen. Burr Danid, or Danid, however you want to pronounce that. Again, it, not quite sure how to pronounce that name. Um, but just specific characters from the Crimson Empire, one story that could have had some really cool characters. And then, of uh, cool figures, I mean, not characters. And then, of course, in Crimson Empire 2, there's plenty of awesome characters from that. Um, they could have done some of the various members of the Imperial Council that were killed off and maybe blamed on Kirk Hanos, um, even though he said at the end of 1 he was going after the Imperial Council. Uh, maybe some of the characters from 3. Who do you think? What's your favorite characters that you wish got toys from Crimson Empire that weren't specifically Carnor Jax and Kirk Kanos. And then, of course, then we got to get into Black Series. Black Series has the Royal Guard figure. There's a Shadow Guard figure, which isn't here presently at this moment. And then later on, Hasbro started doing these awesome singular comic packs where the box art reflected the cover of the main uh, comic. So we have... Um, Carnor Jax, because Hasbro accidentally name switched it. Um, we have Carnor Jax with the famous Crimson Empire cover right here, actually, which features Kirk Hanos on it, not Carnor Jax. Um, the figure is itself Kirk Hanos. Hasbro even came out and confirmed it after the fans were so kind to correct them on the name mistake. Hopefully, there is an actual Carnor Jax coming in the future, and maybe it'll turn into another, you know, Kenner, Forlom, and Zucka situation where they'll name the Carnor Jax figure, Kirk Kanos, just to, just to roll into the joke kind of a thing. Or maybe they'll both be released as Carnor Jax. Who knows? It is a very, very cool figure. Fully articulated. I mean, all they really did was change the, uh, the cloth mold for, or I guess cloth pattern in this case, for the cape, rather than it being the full all the way around cape. Uh, as of right here with the classic Royal Guard, the Black Series figure has a open cape and it does have the nice purple inner colors which looks very nice actually I really do like that unfortunately though um, the f one of the features of the black series figure that they did not include is no removable helmet it is just a um, repaint of the regular guard helmet which honestly I'm not surprised that Hasbro would have cut that corner um, but it would have been cool to see if they had just gone that, taken that little extra step to give it a removable helmet and do a face for Kirk Hanos on the figure. Other than that, the figure is fantastic. It's really cool looking. But, I mean, if we're going to only get one other figure, hopefully, from Crimson Empire, and hopefully if Hasbro does have plans to continue these comic packs like they did for this year, for the 50th of Lucasfilm, that... Carnor Jax's actual figure is next up to come for these Crimson Empires. And it's just another simple repaint, it, and it really is. All they would have to do is just reverse the colors of the Kirk Hanos figure to make it Carnor Jax. I mean, Carnor Jax has a black and red armor with a black cape with purple, um, with the with the bright purple on the inside, which that was really nice. That was something Hasbro improved on from the 3 3 quarter scale release of these characters where they didn't have the purple on the inside of their capes. Um, Whereas Kirk Hanos has the red and black armor with the red cape and the purple on the inside. So, there you go. Anyway, like I said, guys, let us know in the comments. What did you guys want to see as far as Crimson Empire? What do y'all think of that story? I really like it. And did y'all like the articles that Liam wrote? Because I think he did a pretty good job talking about Crimson Empire. I, I like Crimson Empire. It's an awesome story. I'm hoping maybe we'll get some kind of version of that 
at some point here in Star Wars canon. I think it's entirely possible because in Mandalorian, we know we have featured remnants of the Empire and some of them are sure to have stayed loyal to Palpatine's vision. I mean, clearly there are remnants of the Empire that did considering he started the Final Order or revived the Galactic Empire on Exegol. And we know that that point started from at least as of uh, in between Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi, because we see that in the comics, Palpatine is building his forces on Exegol already at that point. So uh, we know that some remnants stayed loyal to Palpatine the whole time, all the way up through Rise of Skywalker. So I'm kind of curious to see where it goes from there, how many of these guards. Maybe we can still have a Crimson Empire story within Star Wars canon, maybe Crimson Empire can be tweaked by Marvel a little bit just to just to fit the current details of canon and still have, you know, two royal guards going at it and clashing, you know, double vibro swords like they did in in the uh, Crimson Empire comic. That would be really cool to see, I think. Let us know what you think. Um, what, what are a bunch of characters I didn't mention to get figures? And I know there's plenty of characters from two and three that I didn't mention. I mostly wanted to cover Crimson Empire 1 in this video because that's usually the main focus of the figures anyway. Let us know in the comments. Make sure you like, subscribe, follow us on social media, and stay tuned for more. Thank you so much for tuning in. Go check out rebelscum.com. That's it for today, guys. We'll see you guys later. We'll see you another time. May the force be with all of you, you rebel scum.